Good morning and welcome to the Daily Post on this 26th of February. Uh, we're here to bring you some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you and uplift you through the day. We begin with the scripture as usual today. It comes from Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, Numbers 12, 13 and 14 and Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 43 are the targets. The thoughts for the day, three grand essentials to happiness in life are something to do, something to love and something to hope for. The pursuit of happiness is a most ridiculous phrase. If you pursue happiness, you'll never find it. To take all that we are and have and hand it over to God may not be easy, but it can be done. And when it is done, the world has in it one less candidate for misery. The motivational thought for the day, Lord, with your help, I will focus on each small step of the climb instead of the mountain that stands before me. Wonderful advice. On this day, in 1616, the Roman Inquisition delivered an injunction to Galileo Galilei demanding that he abandon his belief in heliocentrism. That is, the, the uh, view that the earth and planets revolve around the sun. In 1797, the Bank of England issued its first one pound notes. In 1935, engineer Robert Watson Watt demonstrated radar, a radio detection system. In 1936 on this day, German leader Adolf Hitler opened the new Volkswagen car factory in Saxony. In 1952, on this day, Prime Minister Winston Churchill announced that Britain has its own atomic bomb. And in 1991, the world's first web browser is presented to the public. In 1993, a suspected car bomb explodes beneath the World Trade Center in New York. And in 2018 on this day, cold weather, nicknamed the Beast from the East, hit Europe, killing seven and covering Pompeii in snow. <coughs> the personal story of the day is entitled Marching On. In 1861, during the US Civil War, author and lecturer Julia Ward Howe visited Washington DC. One day, she went outside the city, where she saw a large number of soldiers marching. Early the next morning, she awoke with the words for a song in her mind. She was aware of the ugliness of the war, but her faith led her to write, quote, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, unquote. She saw that in spite of of and through all the ugliness, God was, quote, marching on, unquote, towards the day when he will right the wrongs of the ages. The prophet Habakkuk came to a similar conclusion. Chapter 1 of his book tells us how troubled he was when he learned that God was going to punish the people of Judah by letting them be conquered by the wicked Babylonians. In chapter 2, God assured his servant that, in spite of and through all the ugliness and wrongs of history, he is marching on towards the day when the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as we read in verse 14. If we believe that God is marching on, in spite of all the brutal conflicts that mark our day, we will not despair. We can wait quietly until the final verdict from our Lord, who rules the universe from his holy temple. See Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 20. 
the devotional thoughts of the day. The first is crushed through false teaching, the scripture from Ezekiel 34 verse 16 and references from Jeremiah 23 verses 1 to 11 and Matthew 23 verses 13 to 39. And will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. I will feed them with judgment, that is justice. A few years ago, the world watched with shocked disbelief as the huge corporation Enron seemed to crumble overnight. But as details emerged indicating how company executives had deceived their shareholders and employees, shock turned to anger. When people on the street were interviewed, there was widespread disgust that a handful of people could be so greedy and unfeeling to wipe out the financial security of so many faithful employees. Leaders have obligations towards those whom they manage. This is true in the corporate world and it's no less true for spiritual leaders. Two days ago, we saw Jeremiah's deep outrage against the prophets who were false and who had mis misled God's people. Remember how he cried out that his heart was broken within him in verse 9. We're looking at part of this same prophecy again, but from a slightly different perspective today. We're focusing on the Lord's promise concerning the one who would lead his people with perfect justice. First, however, let's look at similar outrage expressed by our Lord Jesus over Jerusalem's leaders in his day. Matthew 23 lists seven woes or denunciations directed at leaders who fail to lead justly. Even a quick read over this list shows us how angry Jesus was when teachers and spiritual leaders crushed the people under unnecessary burdens and deadly hypocrisy. We also see that wicked leaders change very little over time, just as Jerusalem's leaders sought to kill Jeremiah, whom God had sent to them, so too the religious leaders of Jesus' day crucified the one whom God had sent to them. In Matthew 23 verses 37 to 39, we find a rebuke from Jesus that sounds much like something we could have heard from Jeremiah. It's helpful to put Matthew 23 and Jeremiah 23 side by side because the passage in Jeremiah predicts the coming of the righteous branch who would shepherd God's people as God had intended. Whereas Jeremiah longed for this perfect shepherd, Jesus is that good shepherd. He is the king who shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. See Jeremiah 23 verse 5. Truly he is the Lord our righteousness. As Jeremiah and Jesus observed leadership that had gone bad they both responded with outrage and sorrow. Outrage for those who led unjustly and sorrow for those who had been deceived. Do we have this same sense when we hear about political leaders who crush entire nations or religious leaders who deceive congregations? Like Jesus and Jeremiah, we need to be outraged by abuses of leadership and grieve for those who are affected. At the same time, we must pray that these individuals are found by the Good Shepherd. The second thought, strength from above. The scripture from Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wonderful scripture. Anyone can become weary and feel like giving up. Young people in particular are bound in energy but often lack clear focus and trained persistence. We can be tired of God's work or tired in God's work. There is a significant difference. Some people get tired of God, the church or people. Such people give up and abandon everything in order to cultivate a selfish lifestyle. Eventually, they lose everything God had given them, and their lives revolve around trivialities and unimportant issues. Others get tired in God's work. They get tired from working. God is aware of this. Still, this is when we most often feel as though we have failed or that God is not with us. That God is not against us. He is for us. He is the one who gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. When we are tired, we easily make wrong decisions. We think we cannot manage. We allow feelings and circumstances to dictate our state of being. And of course, we entertain the thought that the grass is greener on the other side. Never make decisions under such circumstances. If we feel the least bit unsure, we should delay making a decision. We should wait until our strength has returned, and it will return, even though we scarcely believe it will. Put your trust in the Lord as you wait. Be still, and new wing feathers will appear. A new wind will blow. You will flow with new wind currents, and it will be the wind that carries the eagle. Then you can move forward once again without wearying. Today we're going to uh, look at uh, thoughts in verse and uh, a worship song which is not one of our choruses but a wonderful song nevertheless. It's entitled You Are My Strength and we'll look at the whole thing today. It has a couple of verses and a, and a chorus. The first verse says, You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches to me. You are my hope, hope like no other. Hope like no other reaches to me. And the chorus, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. Unfailing love, stronger than mountains, deeper than oceans, reaches to me. Second verse, your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the sky. And then back to the chorus. Wonderful words that tie in, of course, with the second devotional thought today. That's where our strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. You are my strength like no other strength. You are my hope like no other hope. The facts of the day. The fear of vegetables is called lacanophobia. The average American, Canadian, drinks about 600 sodas a year. And the closing thought. Lord, thank you for the wise words of others that help me to be a better saint. Thanks for being with us today. We hope that the Daily Post will be a help and uh, will uplift you through the day. And we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow morning. In the meantime, have a blessed day. Bye for now.